Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. It's been about two weeks since my last video. I transitioned a lot of the garden, or started, a lot of my summer crops, the crops that love the warm weather, 50, 60 degree soil, hot days, and all that. I'll talk about those, show you everything I put in, talk about tips for taking care of your summer garden. The great potato experiment is growing, is going really well. Tons of potatoes. And this year I'm just growing potatoes everywhere I can. I want to see what they do, how they grow, and maximize the growth. These are my 100 gallon root pouches I sell at the shop, packed full of potatoes. And one of the things I'm doing this year is I filled this halfway, put in some potatoes, filled it again, put in more potatoes. So this is packed full of potatoes. Try saying that quickly. My idea is instead of, you know, planting a layer of potatoes here, you let them grow and then you backfill, put in more dirt. I just packed in the potatoes and I want to see how much comes out of there. And if it works, this is something I'll be doing regu regularly and I'll be talking more about that on video um, when, when harvest time comes. These are sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes love warm temperature. Putting them out, out early really does nothing. If you're looking to pick up sweet potato slips, if you didn't grow any of yours, they're at Home Depot now. I'm not affiliated with them, but there's one right around the corner. And the sweet potato slips just rolled in. Pack them in there, maybe a foot apart each way, 14 inches, 12 of them. Sweet potatoes, you want to just let them grow from May, hopefully your season's long enough, into September till a frost comes, damages the vines and then you harvest them. It's a long growing period for sweet potatoes. They are not related to potatoes, they're different. I have a lot of trellising. I want all the vining to come up this way. And I'll talk more about this in future videos, but to set the soil up, I did the standard layering that I do that I should talk about in other videos, but I did add in um, some triple phosphate bone meal. I kind of jacked up the phosphorus and also in the potassium in the middle area. Just a couple handfuls sprinkled around in addition to the standard granular fertilizer I use. Your root crops tend to like phosphorus and um, potassium more so than your crops that grow above ground. That's just generally speaking. So I just added a little bit more into there. We'll see how they do. Crazy warm temperatures now and rolling in hotter than normal. These are doing really well. Again, you want your sweet potatoes to go in when the nights are in the 60s, the soil's really warm, the days are hot. Let's go on inside. I'm going to show you, I kept some of my cool weather crops because they're starting to bolt. And bolting is when they transition from growing leafy greens to flowers and seed pods. And that happens for one main reason. The soil gets too hot. It's based on how the roots feel. The roots start to, start to warm up and they transition from being leafy. This is my arugula and you can see all the stalks that are coming up and they're about to bloom. Arugula gets pretty strong tasting. I will still use that in stir fries with rice. The lettuce is starting to break from heading form. I still have a couple days to use that. I'll finish that up but it's starting to bolt. Coming over to this side, you know, things are looking good in here too. This is my root pouch garden. Last year's carrots, starting to do the same thing. They're biennials. I'm actually keeping that there for different butterflies and stuff like that. One of the keys for your summer crops, if, and I'll attach a video that I just did on this. Now I'm giving, general information too. That's a four or five gallon pot. That's a 10 gallon pot. Those are 100 gallon pots. Just because I say a tomato is best grown in a 10 or 20 gallon pot doesn't mean you can not grow them in something smaller. It just means that you're going to have to water more often and feed more often. So it's really important to not picture your plant when it's tiny, put it into a small container, it gets big, the root system can't support the upper growth, and you do, get some gro you do get some harvest, some vegetables off of it, but they just don't thrive. So you really want to match the mature size of your plant to the size of the container. And these are doing pretty well. Those are mints, uh, lemon balm, they go in there, some herbs and stuff. These are peas, there's probably eight, maybe 10 pea plants in there. That's a 10 gallon pot. I just got my cucumber plant in. You definitely want to trellis cucumbers. They'll be growing up the fence. Those are three plants. Now I will thin that to 
one or two plants. You don't really want to put in three fully vining large cucumber plants into a space like this. Again, this is 100 gallons, something that I do sell, but I want just two cucumber plants in here. The root systems will be managed well, and then I'll be able to put some other plants right in front of here. If you overload big plants in a small space, the plants just don't do well. In fact, sometimes they grow really well, they look great, they look great, and then when it comes to fruiting and flowering, they just, they don't make it. So, don't be afraid to remove a plant, give them the right space in containers. In the ground, you can plant them much more closely together if you want. Sometimes diseases become an issue. Um, by putting plants closer together, you create a lot of space for different insects and problems to sometimes flourish better. Can you guess what that is? I left it in there because it looks really cool, but it's also starting to flower. These are biennials, so this is Swiss chard. So it overwinters fine. The leaves are still really tasty, but with the warmth in their second year, they're starting to flower. But I thought it just looked so cool that I'm keeping it there and slowly, you know, pulling the leaves off. This will be gone in about a week or so. I'm using mulch. I will link the video for grass clippings. You don't want to pile on grass clippings. They get, um, matted down basically. The underside doesn't dry out, kind of gets this wet, gross, smelly mess. So maybe a half an inch of sprinkled grass clippings. This will brown out in a couple of days. And then when it's totally brown, top to bottom, you put on another half inch. It makes a wonderful mulch. And if I can give one tip for a successful summer vegetable garden, it's consistent watering. And so many times people ask me, well, how often should I water? And the answer without kind of being snarky is when your plants need it. It varies too greatly to put your plants on a watering schedule. It's good for you to say, okay, I'm gonna go out Monday and Wednesday and check on the plants, but you also might have to go out on Friday. If it's super hot, you have to check again on Saturday. Plants in general want their roots want a good two inch soaking of water, but it's really hard to measure. Um, so it's a constant process of soaking the soil to get deep into the roots. But the tip is using the mulch and keeping the top four inches damp. Your, most of your summer plants send out surface roots, and this is what a lot of people don't know, is the deep watering keeps the plant alive. In my opinion, keeping the surface mulched and moist, and that's where you drop compost and top dressings, keeping that really going with moisture allows your tomatoes, your peppers, your squash, your cucumbers to really thrive because they have so many surface roots. Well, let's stop right here real quick. This is my broccoli that got in early. It's not even forming a head. Again, here in Maryland Zone 7, spring just stinks basically for getting uh, cauliflower heads, broccoli heads. I'll be growing all this come August for the fall. The cabbage, you know the leaves look great. It's just not heading. The heat will affect this plant. Collard greens look pretty good. They got some holes in there from slugs, but I've been taking care of that. More potatoes tucked in in there. So the cool weather crops here in Maryland typically like a good 60 to 90 days of the right temperature. That means not a lot of frost coming. Even though they can survive frost, they just like this long, cool period, 60, 90 days, to form and do everything. We just don't have that in Maryland. It only took me 20 years to give in. That's why I don't have a lot planted. So I'm dropping in my tomatoes everywhere. Those are uh, tomato plants. <laughs> Homestead, Porter, Chocolate Stripes. Nice and healthy. Put the mulch down. It's loose. You want to put this down on a sunny day when you get a couple days of 85, 90 degree temperature. It's fine to do it in lower temperature days. You just want to make sure on lower temperature days you're giving this enough time to dry all the way through. You don't want big heavy piles matted down where it becomes a smelly mess. The whole key is to dry this through. You have nitrogen in here. And the cool thing about using mulch, and I've done all the beds, three more tomato plants, I mean, I might as well give the names. Green Zebra, Bonnie's Best, Mortgage Lifter, Golden Jubilee, uh, that's the Arkansas Traveler, and that's a big boy. 
right in there. That was put in maybe three or four weeks ago. So I have some bigger plants too. So by putting down grass clippings, letting them dry through, they brown. They're not comp composting down, they're not breaking down, but they're still filled with great nutrients, lots of nitrogen. So you're also sort of building a compost pile through May, June, July, August, September, October. The grass clippings are working as a mulch, keeping weeds down, conserving moisture, keeping the surface soil moist. But come late fall, when your beds are going to sleep, you turn this under, you mix it into your earth, you're adding compost. And actually, if you kept doing this year after year after year, you're going to get greater organic matter in your garden. You're going to have to use uh, less organic fertilizers, less of any kind of fertilizer, because you're adding in good stuff. And you can see that this is starting to dry up. This side was done before the other side, obviously. And again, not a whole lot, but you just want this to dry out you got a great mulch and that's the key I'm going to stress that through this video maintaining surface moisture really makes a difference on having your summer vegetables thrive more cucumbers yeah more <laughs> tomatoes that I just put in that's an old German Belgium pink black crim tigerella and that is a black brandy wine right in the corner all smaller this was like my second or third wave of tomatoes that I grew I have my squash plants in. They will be thin to one plant. Even though there's tons of room for roots to grow, you just want to keep one squash, one zucchini, space something like that because the plants just become massive. And can you really eat like 40 zucchini and squash when they're all maturing at the same time? No. So don't overplant your squash and zucchini. You can't even eat them that quickly anyway. I love watching them grow, but one plant, I'm letting these establish a little bit more. I'll remove whatever plant I think is the weakest. I don't think we could do a tour without coming over here and me talking about how I started these. Both started at the same time. This one had the polycarbonate over the top, kept the soil warm, and you can see for yourself, let's step back, how much larger the peas on the right are. And this whole side produced much more quickly and this looks great, like there's no shame in this, this side of the uh, experiment. There aren't any flowers on there. These are starting to flower. And these will be producing peas probably a good 7 to 10 days before the side over here. And that's just because the soil was warm and maintained and protected with that polycarbonate sheet. And I'll be doing that in the fall too. Here is my corn. I did grew this last year, put in 64 um, corn plants into here, 64 seeds. Most of them came up. They got really tall, were forming ears of corn. Squirrels came in and wrecked them. So these posts are the beginning of a cage that I'll put in. This year, however, I'm putting in, I put in 81 corn seeds. So I don't think they're all going to come up, but again, I'm packing in the corn into here, experimenting and just seeing how I can maximize this space. The thing about corn is like some people say, well, can I grow it in containers? Yes, you can. But if you put in like four or six stalks into a container and you know, they get really big, the tassels that sit on top of the corn, when you shake them, pollen comes out. That pollen has to land on every tassel that's on the ear of a corn. And uh, there's at least hundreds, I don't think thousands, but hundreds to connect to each ear of corn or each kernel of corn when you, you know, peel the husk off. The corn that you eat is attached to a silk and they have to be pollinated. When you just have four, six in a small square, the wind blows, the pollen blows away from the corn, doesn't come down and fertilize the silks. And that's why sometimes you end up with corn that's not fully, um, I'm going to use the word kernelized, which is not a word, it's not fully kernelized because the silks didn't get pollinated. So you have some really nice corn kernels in there, but you have all these gaps. So a big square, lots of corn, lots of pollen. When the wind blows, the pollen is blowing everywhere, dropping down, fertilizing the ears of corn, 
you get great corn. And I did get great corn, except the uh, squirrels got to enjoy it. Let's come over to here. I will attach the video, if you didn't see it. This was where I shot a video on how do you help tomato plants that were yellow, a little bit purpley, beat up. Maybe this was, what, seven or 10 days ago? I don't know. Well, they've all come back, and just by using fish emulsion, staying patient, they are nice and green. Now the soil here is nice and moist because I watered last night after the, the sun was going down. This will be all dried out by noon. The side where I started putting mul or the grass clippings down as mulch will not. The moisture is going to stay in on this side. If I did an experiment, the tomato plants here would do better. These will still grow, but these will do better over here. I'm not going to do an experiment. I'll be cutting more grass, putting down more grass clippings. But I just wanted to show you the use of the fish emulsion has really fixed these plants. You don't have to panic when you have struggling plants that you just got into the ground. We're moving from colder soil to warmer soil to warmer temperature and your summer crops love that. So the combination of helping them out with the fish emulsion the warm temperatures coming, the tomato plants are taking off. And they're going to double in size really every seven to ten days until they get, you know, pretty big. Here are the first wave of tomatoes that I put in. They're all looking pretty good. These are my cherry tomatoes. And I want to just show you something kind of cool. So these were all grown indoors. You know, several weeks of months taking care of them, getting them outside. This guy got beat up by frost, but he looks great. My point is, that tomato plant right down there is growing to a nice size, and that's just a seed that overwintered when the temperatures got right, this whole garden bed has these tomato plants popping up. This plant will catch up pretty quickly to this plant and I'm thinking to myself, why did I spend two months, three months trying to grow these when, when the soil temperature is right, the day temperatures are right, the ambient temperature around the plant, tomato plants and your summer crops just take off. Now I know why I do it, because it's a lot of fun and I'm trying to get these early and I will get tomatoes earlier. But you're not at a loss if you can't start plants indoors and you just start them right in the ground when the temperatures all fall into place and the conditions are right, these plants germinate, they grow quickly, you'll have your full summer garden and you don't have to worry about starting everything indoors or buying transplants, especially if you're on a budget. It can be expensive. Seed packs are the cheapest way to go. I have leeks in here. Now your cool weather crops, I think it's a good idea to start from seed because if you put them into the ground, and it's just too cold, those seeds sit there and they don't germinate. So if you germinate your peas, your collards, broccoli, cabbage, if it grows well in your area, leeks, onions, all those kinds of plants, there's a greater benefit because you can get them germinated, get them into the soil, they manage, they grow, they do pretty well. Summer crops get a good jump by growing them yourself, it works for sure, but you can go buy seed and they really catch up to plants that you do as transplants. So I have leeks in there, sugar baby, watermelons I just planted. I'm gonna keep two in there. They're more of a bush variety. Trellising set up for them. They'll also be able to go on the ground in this space around, around my fig tree. I'll clear out all that stuff. Now, how do you get four, eight, 12, 16 tomato plants in a two foot by six foot space? Well, these are all dwarf tomatoes, so I think that'll make for a cool video. Um, the ones on the end are a little bit bigger, ones in the middle are smaller, but this is all planted with dwarf and smaller determinate tomatoes, and we'll see how that does. That should be a fun experiment. I have my space set up for my bug area, my toad area. I'm gonna probably keep it like this. I was gonna take all these out, but I got tired of taking stuff out and putting them in places. So I'll just keep this watered. Great for pollinators and good insects. I'm going to spin around because I don't want my shadow in here. But you can see how well these guys are doing. 
And again, these were the transplants. They are bigger. They'll produce a bit sooner, but I don't want you to feel like you can't have a summer garden because you didn't start your own plants. I have more in here. All nice and green, just following the practices that I've been doing now for the last three years here. Um, these aren't overfed. They're not jacked up on the chemical fertilizers, even though I will use them for emergencies. These were really these beds were set up mostly at the end of last year and some granular fertilizer in the planting hole and then fish emulsion if the plants are struggling and they're doing really really well last year the frost was really bad I broke out the chemical fertilizers fed everything just to get them reestablished the peppers are looking good they're all coming back they were all beat up by a frost of course because I tend to push stuff out quickly but they're all coming back with a vengeance and again it's getting hot peppers love the heat they're all mulched too in there conserve that moisture keep their roots happy they're gonna do really well tomatillos you really want to have two people say for pollinating and they say different varieties however I found when I just grew a single variety the harvest was pretty good and I don't really believe you need two different varieties of the tomatillos, tomatillos. You just need two plants. Just make sure that pollen is there. And these are going to be in the back. They'll go up a post. They'll be great. Tomatoes in the front. Here's an example of... Sometimes it's hard to see with the sun. I kind of neglected these and they weren't being watered regularly. Regularly, right? Um, and they're more yellow. Lack of moisture, not lack of nutrients, lack of taking care of them. And I forgot I sort of tucked them there. These were just extra plants. Um, I like the sweet pepper, so I just tucked them in there. Versus the plants I was watering and taking care of, nice and green, you know, looking like they're doing really, really well. So watering, 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 consistency. All right, let's, well, let take a look at all the asparagus coming in. I gotta clean up this area. But I've been harvesting asparagus now for probably going on three weeks. I'll grab a few more before that is done. Let's walk over to the container garden. The blueberries and blackberries are doing really well. I just wanna give you a, a look at really my summer garden. This is, this is probably the most fun time I have. It's transitioning away. I've gotten to enjoy the cool weather crops. And now all the big guns are coming in, so to speak. And this place will just be packed full of tomatoes and beans. I have beans in here. I'll show you those next time when they're a little bit bigger. But they're doing, the plants are doing really, really well. So I'm really excited. Spinning around here, the next vertical series video will be coming out. These plants are doing well. Keep them watered, of course. When you see your pepper plants, you know, that doesn't look great. But the other peppers don't have it. These got beat up. So the weak leaves could get diseases, could look bad. When your plant gets strong, starts growing again, it fends off those problems. There's nothing to worry about. What you would look for is that problem showing up on all these nice green leaves. Uh, here's some beans in here, by the way. That's gonna be in the vertical tower series. Those are bush beans. So don't panic when you see those patterns panic if they're everywhere vertical gardens doing really well and i guess we'll finish up coming around here these are tiny tims they're starting to take off all the flowers are coming these will be where i really get my first tomatoes although i did pick a few off that plant is going to be packed full of tomatoes coming into here frost damage dying back new growth came in tons of flowers this section is the neglected section, but it will be taken care of this week. Massive amounts of strawberries. I've already harvested a bunch out of here. And there's a nice looking one right in there. Again, match the container size to the number of plants you're having in there. Strawberries you can actually pack in there. They're gonna be sending out runners. I'll be propagating these. You just put these into the soil or into a container. They'll root out. You can kind of overpack strawberries in places. But with spacing, 
Look how big the leaves are. So it does matter too. So just because you can pack a ton in and the plants do okay, maybe the size suffer a little bit, suffers a little bit. But that's really up to you to experiment and to learn. Peppers in the containers. Here's a good example of where I'll break out the fish emulsion. Eggplant, love the heat. Not sure what is happening to those um, habaneros, but fish emulsion, the extra nitrogen, the heat has shown up. These plants will be doing really, really well. I haven't gotten my pepper plants in that I overwintered, but they're gonna be going somewhere too. And to end where we started the great potato experiment, these potatoes are doing really well. These are the ones that I filled the soil to here. I was supposed to backfill, never got to it. I'll probably try that. But things are going pretty well. So now is the time to get your summer garden planted. You can start with seeds. You can start with transplants, whatever you want. But you have plenty of time to get your squash, your zucchini, your cucumbers, your tomatoes, all those plants growing. The only one that you might want to start from a transplant are pepper plants because they tend to grow a little bit more slowly and sometimes you want a longer season. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and enjoy the next week or so getting your summer garden established. Thanks for watching.